Good evening, Avenue Church. I am Jerry Witt, and I am lucky to be coming to you tonight to be able to talk to you about uh, John 17. That's our devotion for today during our Passion Week. And um, I was uh, just wanting to take a moment to introduce myself a little bit, since maybe some of you don't know me. Uh, I have been going to the Avenue Church since 2012, summer of 2012, when we came here. We lived in Chicago for all those years before that, moved to South Florida in 2012 with my family. I have three boys and one daughter. Two of my sons have uh, new baby girls. They're going to be having their and celebrating their one-year-old birthdays this year. Some of you may know my one little granddaughter who does come to church with her um, dad and her mom, my son Brady Witt and Lauren Witt, have little Braylon. And uh, then you may even know Anna, some of you who are younger kids. I don't even know if you're on Facebook, but uh, if you are, Anna Witt is my 18-year-old daughter. And I have uh, another son, Grant, who uh, lives with us still. And my other son, Ryan Witt, who came to the Avenue Church in 2011. Uh, he is married to Chelsea Witt, and they live up in Maryland. I've been married to my husband. It will be 32 years tomorrow. Uh, we will be having a stay anniversary. I'm calling that now. Stay birth. Stay, well, stay Earth Days, stay anniversaries, stay graduations. So everything is like staycations. So we're uh, going to figure out what we'll do tomorrow to celebrate. But I suppose we'll do something after. Uh, all these restrictions are lifted. So that you may also know uh, me through some of the ministries that I've been in in the Avenue Church, Celebrate Recovery Ministry. Uh, I've been in the women's ministries. I just recently, we had to unfortunately cancel one of the greatest ministries I've been in, which is Alpha Ministry. And you may know me from that, but you also might know me. Uh, I'm sometimes affectionately called the Popcorn Lady. So I do own the original Popcorn House in downtown Delray. Um, and that's where I spend most of my days when I'm not uh, being quarantined to our house. So like I said, today we're going to be uh, sharing the devotional and we're gonna be uh, reading from John 17. So if you've got your Bibles and you wanna follow along, uh, do that now. We're, it's a pretty long prayer. This is basically Jesus praying before he is going to go to his um, crucifixion. He is praying uh, one of the longest prayers that Jesus ever uh, prayed in the Bible that's been recorded. And he is praying for specifically three groups of people here. He's praying for himself, he's praying for his disciples, and then he's praying for the world. And he's teaching us through this passage, I believe, that that is a great way for all of us, too, to learn how to pray. So let's jump in to John 17, verse, verses 4 through 5. I'll read those to you now, and you can read along. Uh, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your, in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. So this is Jesus asking the Father to glorify him. And he's asking for this specifically because he knows he's going to um, be murdered uh, very soon and that he's going to be crucified and that he is coming home to his Father. So he's praying for himself. And that whole first, uh, probably one through uh, seven, are all about him praying on behalf of himself to his father. And then we're gonna pick back up in John 17. We're gonna skip down to verses seven through nine. And this is when Jesus makes a shift to praying for his disciples. He loved his disciples and uh, he knows he's gonna soon be without them and he's gonna be leaving them. And so now he's intercessing for them and praying to the father on their behalf. And so in verse seven, it says, now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came for you. And they have believed that you sent me. And in verse 9, he says, I am praying for them. 
So he actually says it out loud that he is praying for his disciples, uh, who he knows he's leaving very shortly. So he teaches us then that we should be praying for others, praying for our loved ones, praying for our family, praying for those who are near and dear to our heart and who we love so much, just as he's doing here in these verses. And then we're going to skip on over to verse 20. And then this is when Jesus makes his shift to praying for all of those who are going to come to know him through his disciples and through his time here on earth. Um, so in verse 20, he says, I do not ask for these only, he's meaning the disciples there, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So now he's praying for the world, and he's praying that those that are going to get told about him through his disciples and through his time on earth here, that they too are going to get the exact same glorification that Jesus is praying for in the beginning for himself and his disciples. He wants it to be carried down to everyone as he knows he's preparing to leave the earth for now. Um, and so I think that's a, just a really great um, uh, chapter for us to learn how to be praying, especially in a time of crisis like this, because Jesus was in pretty bad way getting ready to go in and knowing his uh his time on earth was coming to an end here and he was going to be leaving the people who he loved the most. And so Jesus is teaching us that in times of hardship and struggle and uncertainty and suffering and pain, that this is the way to pray. So if we take this direction from Jesus, um, we can first pray for ourselves, pray for our needs, our desires, our anxieties, our sadness, our struggle, whatever it is that we need Jesus is teaching us, take it to the Father. Go to the Father with it. Give it to him. Let him hear about it. Tell him about it. He wants to hear from you. And then secondly, he has um, us praying for the people that we love, for our family and friends and our church and all the people that we um, care for on a daily basis and love each and every day. He wants us to pray for them and pray for their needs and what it is that that's going to comfort them and uh, whatever their struggles are and whatever their pain is and whatever their joys are. He wants us to share that with the Father just as he was sharing his desire for his disciples to be uh, with him in the end and to be glorified and to be protected. And then lastly, he prays for the world. He wants the world to know him through himself and through his disciples as they go out and spread the good news. And for us as a church, uh, that would mean us praying. As we all know, this has been a global pandemic. As big as our world is, is it is small because even though this virus maybe happened in China and has reached all the way to the U.S. and, and down into Australia and up into Alaska, no, no country in our world is not gone through what we're going through here in the United States. So even though we are separated by thousands and thousands of miles, we are still all absolutely 100% interconnected and we can see how easily we are all affected by the same thing. Just as Italy and Spain and the US have suffered and China and all the other countries who have suffered, they're all suffering the same thing that we're suffering. They've all gone through it with us. And I just think that that just ties us all together so much more than we really believe and know or even really think about on a daily basis. And so praying for our world, praying for people to come to know Jesus through this, praying for the lost, the suffering, the healthcare workers, the frontline people who are working every day to try to save lives and take care of people. There's just so much to be praying for right now. And then to also be the hands and feet of Jesus. How can we do that? Well, our church is doing something uh, by feeding people. Do you know that a lot of people in this situation aren't even able to find food? Many children who would go to public school, that would be their only meals for the day. And so serving the public now 
through meals from 11 to 1 at Trinity and Avenue Church. They're doing that. I know there's food banks throughout South Florida where they're lining cars up and doing it safely. I've heard about people giving them their RVs that have just been parked idly and letting healthcare workers live in them while they're quarantined from their family and it's not safe. Writing letters to the nursing homes where these people are isolated from everyone since they're at the highest risk. Helping your next door neighbor, maybe if they're elderly or if they can't get out or they're a compromised immune system and they need groceries or they need um, medicine from the doctor, uh, anything that we can do to be the hands and feet to help others in this time of need is truly a reflection, I believe, of, um, of how Christ lived his life here on earth. So I'm encouraging all of us, myself included, I know that when I, um, when I start to feel uh, like I'm getting too much inside of my head or too focused on myself, I've always found that reaching out and helping somebody else and doing things for others is, is the best way. I own a business. I know business are going to fail and not come back from this. And so um, doing your part after we can get mobilized again and helping those small businesses and frequenting those small businesses will be a great help to them. Helping even making donations to um, our local churches and, and churches that are like the Avenue Church, if you're a member there, and if you have something extra to give uh, financially, all churches across the nation, it's affected everybody. There's nobody unaffected financially by this and then to help bless others with that. So I think there's a lot we can do and um, I think we can find comfort in the fact that Jesus understands suffering. He knew uh, suffering. He knew what it was like to need the Father and to go to him in a time of crisis and um, I think that this is a great example for all of us. And so I, I do pray that after we're done with this devotional tonight, that you'll take those three steps to pray for yourself, pray for your family, and then pray for the world. And then find out how, if there's any way, if you're, you're not one of those high risk people, or if you're a person who needs the help, that you ask for it. And we as a church united can come together and serve the needs of our community. So uh, stay well, Avenue Church. Uh, I look forward when we can join again in um, a large group. Uh, and so I'm, I'm just thankful that we have this social media right now to keep us all connected. And I think our church has done a fabulous job at doing that. And I look forward to seeing you all in person and um, shaking hands and hugging again. And I don't know when that'll be, but hopefully soon. So I just want to take a moment and just pray with you and then uh, I will be done for this evening. So thank you. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much, Lord, for this time together um, with whoever it was that was listening, Lord. I pray uh, for each one individually, Lord, that they will be comforter, comforted, blessed, and if necessary, healed, Lord. I pray for their wisdom in their minds and, and uh, for any fear to be squashed, Lord, and that they will feel protected and comforted by you. And I'm just so thankful for our time here, Lord. I'm thankful for this Easter week and um, that, Lord, we have eternal life to look forward to and that you did raise from the grave, Lord. We can be so thankful to know that you conquered death and that uh, our, our lives are secure in you. And so I thank you for your son, Jesus, Father, and I just, um, I just pray for our nation and our world as a whole, Lord, that you will um, keep us all protected. And I know, Lord, I'm trusting I'm trusting, Father, that you have a much greater plan. You knew about all of this before we ever did. And I know that it's going to glorify you. And I just am thankful that we have you. And I, I hope that we can be uh, great disciples for you. And it's in Jesus' power, powerful and precious name that we pray. Amen.